Woods. Very much welcome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome on this All Saints Sunday. Um, well, All Saints Day is the first, but we are honoring the saints who have passed in our lives, all of them today, especially those who have died this year from our community and our families. We light a special candle for them, and uh, right after the sermon time, we're going to invite anybody who would like to to come up and light a candle in honor of a loved one, or two or three. Um, not two or three candles, just one candle for all your loved ones. I don't think, I think that's what we'll have enough for. Welcome. You have to sit on this side. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to drive me crazy. It's like we're, we're tipping. It's tipping yeah. So we remember them. We remember them. And they are with us profoundly, powerfully, and in real life. We're not separate beings. We're not separate beings. In life and in death, we belong to one another. We share life. We share one life, one God, world without end. We say ritually. And today we say a special welcome to Carson. Hi. Carson's parents, godparents, grandparents, great-grandparents, aunts, uncles, one big, happy, crazy family. So we welcome you, Carson, and we're going to welcome you formally into our church community through baptism. And actually, we're going to do that right now. Right now. Carson, are you ready? I want to invite Carson. Parents. Sponsors. Come on forward. If you would like to follow along for the baptismal service, you can find us starting on page 228. But I guarantee you don't need to follow along, especially if you can remember from memory the Apostles' Creed. If you can remember the Apostles' Creed, you don't need a book. I promise. Mike and Allison, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Carson baptized into Christ? If so, ask her, we can do it. You promised to help Carson grow in the Christian life and in faith. If so, ask her, we can Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Carson in Christian faith? as you are empowered by God's Spirit to help him live in the covenant of his baptism, that is, his love. And in communion with the church community, as so answer we do. And people of God, all of us, do we promise to support Carson and pray for him in his life in Christ, if so answer we do. Together, we remember the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for your By your words, you created the world. Calling forth life in which you took delight. Through waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism, 
baptism of Jesus, death and resurrection can set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your spirit, the power of your living word, that Carson, who is here washed in the waters of baptism, may be given new life. You be honored and praised through Jesus Christ, in the unity of the spirit, now and forever. Amen. Carson Belmont, bring your, bring your cell phone over here. I'll do it this way. Block the camera. All right. You want to play with the picture while I do this? Good idea. Just get every last drop. Carson? Now, I'm going to put a little water right on your head, okay? All right? Just bring your head right over here. Carson Belmont, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we gather, gather at the river? 423.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Positions to um, express the truth that God is both within, above, below, around us all. So to say we are in God is true. To say God is in us is true. God is not a being. God is not a being distinct from our being. God is being itself. God is the being by which we say we are beings and have being. We live and move and have our being in God, says the Apostle Paul. Gracious one, holy one, spirit of life, the divine breath by which we breathe. grateful today. We're grateful simply to be here as a community touched by love, the love from one another, the love from family, the love from friends. But most importantly, the love by which all things came into being, by which you created the universe. For love is the truly creative power. Love is the ultimate law above all law. Love is the reason and the purpose for our being here. We give you thanks. that in you we live and move and breathe and have our being. Gospel, Mark chapter 12. Jesus in the temple being questioned, pressed hard by the established authorities in the temple, the scribes, the Pharisees, the chief priests. And they get into disputes. Now, we should understand, I think, from both ancient Jewish culture and even modern Jewish culture to an extent, that argumentation is the way it, it, it's not as bad as like Norwegians arguing. When Jews are... When, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call out Norwegians. Scandinavians, like me. It's often more serious affair. But debate and argumentation was just part of the life. It was part of the life. It's what, it's what they did. It's what the teachers in Israel did. They would press one another and then they would come back and it was 
a way of working together toward some better or higher understanding. It's really rather, rather a cool thing. So in this, so we have a scene like this in Mark chapter 12. One of the scribes comes near and hears Jesus disputing with other scribes. And this scribe sees that Yeshua has answered them very well. And he asks him, which commandment is the first of all? Which one is the first of all commandments? Hmm. <laughs> But Yeshua won't give him exactly what he wants. He says, Yeshua answers, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Now, if you are familiar with Jewish culture, you've ever been to a synagogue, you've heard these words. It's called the Shema. It is the morning and the evening prayer. And it is hoped that it will be the final words on an observant Jew's lips upon death. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. It's a traditional morning, evening prayer at the time of Yeshua and even today. But he doesn't stop there. Remember, he was only asked for one. And he says, and the second is this. Now remember, he was only asked for one. But the second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. See what he did there? He just took two, put them together, and answered them as one. Now, then the scribe says to him, and I imagine he's enjoying this, right? He says, well, you're right, teacher. You have truly said there he, that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the mind and all the understanding and all the strength, and to love one neighbor as oneself, this is much more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Now, they're standing in the temple. These burnt offerings and sacrifices are happening right here. So he's going with him. He's saying, yeah, to love God, heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love neighbor as self, two into one commandment. This is more important than all of this. Beautiful. Lovely little exchange. And then, when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said, uh, you are not far from the kingdom of God. <laughs> and then nobody dares ask him any more questions. The gospel of the Lord. Anyway. <laughs> so I love this little exchange. But the audacity of it is really what impresses me the most. The setting, the audacity, the boiling down of the entire law of Moses and the prophets into these two. And I don't even want to call them commandments because, because commandment suggests something like you shall or else. Either you shall or else Right? That's a commandment, isn't it? From an authority, anyway. Somebody with real authority. Somebody who can penalize you. Take something away. Put you in a time out. Oh, I got, got their attention. Yeah. Somebody who can send you to hell. Based in fear. But this, this goes beyond all of that to something entirely different. Not a commandment in that sense. Not a, 
if, then, or else kind of thing. This is different. It's a little bit like calling this a commandment is a little bit like calling the kingdom of God a kingdom. It's not really a kingdom. It's not a hierarchy with earthly territory and armies and so forth. And this commandment isn't really a commandment. Because what is being commanded or commended might be the better word, is love. This is a commendation to love. It's an invitation to love. And see how it works. See how it works. It's really rather simple. God is one. Here, everybody, God is one. God is one. That means we are one, automatically. One God means that there is no ultimate reality to sectarianism, to othering others. The differences between us cannot possibly be ultimate because there is one who made us all, one who loves us all, one creator, one sustainer. One beginning, one end. There's no part of the universe you can go to where God isn't present. If God is anywhere, God is everywhere, all the time, and beyond time. One God, this one God, not up there, everywhere, in us, around us, and we in God, God in us. And we are invited to love We are invited to love. That doesn't mean, oh, I'm invited to take my love and give it to you. That's a transaction. No, we're invited into love. We're invited into love. The love that precedes us, the love that is so much greater than us, the love that made us, the love that shows us mercy, We're invited into that love. But to make it real, but to make it real, to make it physical, bodily, to make it experience, comes the next part. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. These two are inseparable. You can't do one and not the other. You can't love God and not love your neighbor. I think people are trying to do that all over the place. I would argue without success. You cannot love God and not love your neighbor. You cannot love God and not love your neighbor. You cannot do it. It's impossible. These two are inseparable. They are one and the same commandment. These two are one. Oh, don't you wish you could love God and not love your neighbor? Sometimes. No, you don't. You don't. You really don't. Not really. Not really. That's not living. That's not life. That's not wholeness. That's not strength. That's not wisdom. But look what it says. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. It does not say, love your neighbor as much as yourself. I know I keep saying this, but I really think this is the most simple thing to say and the most difficult thing to actually begin to experience. This invitation is to 
realize and discover that to love your neighbor is to love yourself. That to love yourself is to love your neighbor. There's no separation. You can't, just like you can't love God and not love your neighbor, you can't love yourself and not love others. You cannot love others and not love yourself. It is one and the same. There's no separation at the end of the day and at the beginning of the day. We are one. We come from the same place. We go the same way. All of us. And for a little while, this moment in time, we have this amazing possibility of experiencing life temporarily, separately, as separate beings. But of course, we go too far with that. We begin to imagine that's, that's essentially who we are. We are separate beings, and we are separate beings now. We'll be separate beings when we die. Some of us will go that way, and some of us will go the other way. Some of us will get to see our families. Others of us might get to see our families. You see, eternal separation is not a possibility. It's a myth and a metaphor. It's a symbol. Heaven and hell are symbolic. They are not places. There is no place that anyone can go ever that is apart from God. It can't be done. It doesn't exist. There is one God. Hear, O Israel, there is Lord your God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love life. Love being. Love others. Love yourself. Enter into love. This divine love. This love that is not yours to generate. Yours to give. It's only there. Always there. Love is. For you, for me, for everyone. So at this time, during the musical reflection, I would like to invite us, invite you to come forward. And light a candle. And those of you who are somewhere else on Zoom, we invite you to light a candle if you have one. And especially this year, we are remembering the candles on the altar. Ron Evanuk, Chase Hurdle, Donald Ellis, Steve Moore, Drusilla, Diaboki, Michael, Ed Simon, Gloria Witzke, Paul Witzke, and all these others.
words for the uh, next hymn are on the back of the bulletin. The tune is familiar. Please rise if you're able for the prayers of the people. <clears throat> Gracious God, we give you thanks for new life. We thank you for Carson. We thank you for all the children in the world. We thank you for birth. And we thank you that you are there in our death as well. God, in your mercy, For an end to the senseless violence across the globe, fueled by greed, power, money, indifference. Bring peace through love, God, in your mercy. Bring peace into our hearts. Help us to know that we are love and that we are loved. Help us to participate, to experience to remove the obstacles that we place in ourselves, to living life abundantly. God, in your mercy, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, heal the sick, give sight to the blind, open the ears so we may hear and let us be part of all of that. God, in your mercy, for these persons or situations that we now name aloud are in our hearts. To your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Christ. Amen. Amen. 
The peace of God be with you always. We share a sign of peace to one another. he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this and remember me. And again after supper he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to everyone to drink and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for everyone for the forgiveness of sins. Do this and remember me. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The table is prepared, and everyone is welcome.
Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. May this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ make us feel and sense and know that we are one in God's love. Amen. Announcements. Announcements. Concert on Thursday. Vanguard Jazz. Strings and percussion. It's not saxophones. It's strings and per percussion. With marimba and... Uh, With marimba? <coughs> And, uh, vibes. and vibes. Yeah. Good vibes or bad vibes? Good vibes. Good vibes. Concert, 7 o'clock, Thursday. Come and get a meal. You know, it's like two for, it's a two for. Come and get a meal, get a concert, uh, 7 o'clock. Um, plus, we're working with Eric right over here to get the singer songwriter series back on track. Um, so, news of that forthcoming. Probably in the new year. Classical guitar concert next Sunday. Classical guitar concert on a Thursday. Do you know which? It's a Sunday afternoon at four. Oh, that's right. It's the duo. Classical guitar, Sunday the what? Sunday the 14th, I believe. 
14th of December. Put it on your calendars. Uh, world-class guitarists. Also, uh, <clears throat> Cranksgiving, uh, the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Um, and uh, so show up at noon, bring your bike. You're only gonna have to bike about 30 miles, uh, possibly in the snow or the sleet or the rain or the ice to pick up food at various locations to bring and donate to our food shelf. So that's, we've been doing that every year now for a number of years, Cranksgiving, sponsored by Mr. Michael Recycles Bicycles. <laughs> I ran out of breath even just saying that. <laughs> Mr. Michael Recycles. And anyway, they, um, they, they donate so generously to us from their business proceeds and from this event. And another event that they sponsor also in the spring, which is a free bi bicycle repair shop in our basement. So. Anyway, that's the Saturday before Thanksgiving, the 23rd. There is another, the 14th. What's the 14th? 14th. There's an open mic night. November 14th. There's an open mic night downstairs Thursday night, as well as the food, uh, the meal, and the open market. And then on, what's the day before Thanksgiving? 24? Wednesday the 20th, 27th. On the 27th, we will have uh, a, Thanksgiving, a vegan Thanksgiving meal will be provided downstairs. Uh, no one turned away from lack of funds. Um, and this has been a tradition of Collins for the last number of years, a vegan Thanksgiving meal. So if you would like that, you can pick up your meals and take them home. You can stay here if you... Uh, are otherwise alone on Thanksgiving. It's a great way to hang out and be with other people. So that's Wednesday before Thanksgiving, both an open market and a vegan Thanksgiving themed meal. No toiki, no toiki. Yes? Uh, a question from the gallery. Uh, yeah. Thursday night question, is there a meal? Yeah. Thursday night this week, there is no meal. Oh, I'm sorry. There is no meal this Thursday. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Colin will be gone. Okay, no. Am I right? Jules is not here. Meaning mean one to three? Yes, no. There is. There is. One to three. One to three we have our meal. There's no open market. There's no open market in the evening. Five to eight. Let me be clear. From one to three we have our food giveaway and meal. Yes. From five to eight, no open market and meal because Colin is gone. Thank you. Also, oh, and uh, the, uh, the Way Church is going to be joining us from their normal uh, place down on West 7th Street on the 24th, the 24th, right, Sunday the 24th, and they're going to bring their musicians, and they're going to they're gonna give us uh, the experience of a black Pentecostal musical treat, um, gospel music from front to back, and these people are good, they're good. And so come on along, feel the soul, join with some people we haven't met before but are our sisters and brothers. Okay, that's the 24th. All right, please rise for a closing hymn. Oh, birthday. Anybody else besides Sue? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. All right. Are you going to sing, Carol? Go. All right. Yeah. Oh. At our birthdays. Please rise if you're able. 422 is 422. Give thanks for what? Same.
bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. And may God's countenance be lifted up upon us, giving us peace. Amen. Go in peace. Go in love. Stay for coffee. There's coffee back there. And are there treats too? I think so. I think there's schnibbles as well. Oh,